Bible words and verses, what the Bible says. It is very common for the majority of Bible believers to say that Enoch and Elijah never died and that they went directly to heaven. We are to rightly divide the word of truth, in other words, to discern the truth of the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Remember, the words of the Lord are pure words. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. If we are to rightly divide the Word of God, we cannot take one verse out of context. We'll first analyze Enoch. We are not to take one verse out of context. Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. Translating is to move someone from one physical place or condition to another. It's clear that God found it necessary to hide Enoch, possibly to protect him from a clear and present danger. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. We cannot take one verse out of context. Hebrews 11 verse 5 is followed by Hebrews 11 verse 13. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about the patriarchs of the Bible including Enoch of the line of Seth. Enoch being the seventh from Adam. Adam is first and Enoch is seventh. These all died in faith referring to the patriarchs mentioned in Hebrews 11. Enoch being one of the patriarchs mentioned. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible clearly states that all the mentioned patriarchs died, including Enoch, as Enoch was mentioned among the patriarchs. Just analyzing Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and 13, we get the context of the translation, moving to a different physical location, because verse 13 clearly explains that Enoch died Enoch being one of the patriarchs mentioned in the preceding verses of chapter 11. We have a tendency to isolate one verse out of context instead of looking at other related Bible verses in context in order to understand what God is saying. And unfortunately, the people who condemn looking at an isolated verse are guilty of the same thing when it comes to Enoch and Elijah. When studying other Bible topics, those same people go to different verses and context. But for Enoch, 
they stick to Hebrews 11:5, ignoring altogether Hebrews 11 verse 13. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. If Enoch had never died and gone directly to heaven, Enoch's years would still be adding up today. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. Enoch walked with God. He was faithful to God. And when Enoch died, he was not, for God took him. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let's analyze further and review some items as well. 1. Enoch begat Methuselah when Enoch was 65 years old. 2. Enoch walked with God 300 years after Enoch begat Methuselah. 3. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. When you reach all your days, you die. 4. Enoch died. He was not, for God took him. When you die, you are not, because God takes you, and all others who die for that matter. 1. Enoch begat Methuselah when Enoch was 65 years old. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. 2. Enoch walked with God 300 years after Enoch begat Methuselah. Walking with God is being faithful to God, not walking alongside God in heaven. Enoch was 65 years old when he begat Methuselah. Enoch further lived another 300 years after begetting Methuselah. During the 300 years, Enoch walked with God he was faithful. Enoch died when Enoch was 365 years old. He was not because God took him as he does everyone else. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. 3. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. When you reach all your days, you die. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. 4. He was not, for God took him. When you die, you are not, because God takes you. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Was not, are not. Here's further proof of the word not describing death. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath, and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation, and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they 
are not in Genesis chapter 5 when God is describing the descendants of Seth just because God uses different wording for Enoch does not mean that Enoch was any different from the other descendants of Seth that were mentioned all die except those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord or the second coming now let's analyze Elijah Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven Elijah had accomplished his ministry of prophecy and God chose to take him away to a place of God's choosing in 2nd Kings chapter 2 verse 11 Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and Elisha saw it and he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth in Genesis 1 verse 8 and God called the firmament heaven in Genesis 1 verse 20 and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven the firmament was called heaven the airspace where the birds fly the firmament or heaven is the expanse or airspace above the earth's surface a few years later after Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven King Jehoram received a letter from Elijah the letter dealt with the current matters dealing with King Jehoram Elijah never ascended to the heaven of God's habitation to be with God what happened is that he went up into heaven or the firmament until he was out of sight after which God placed them in a place of God's choosing birds fly in the firmament of heaven now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David and Jehoram his son reigned in his stead and there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet saying thus saith the Lord God of David thy father because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father nor in the ways of Asa king of Judah but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel and hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house which were better than thyself behold with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children 
and thy wives and all thy goods. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. And it came to pass that in process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness, so he died of sore diseases, and his people made no burning for him like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years, and departed without being desired. Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchres of the kings. Another example of translation is that after Philip baptized the eunuch, Philip was caught away. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities, till he came to Caesarea. God can hide anyone he wants, for as long as he wants, for a while, or even till death. Here is another example of Elijah himself, also known as Elias. Elijah being the Hebrew name, and Elias being the Greek equivalent. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. God hid Elijah for the remaining three years of the three and a half years that it did not rain on the earth. Elijah presented himself to King Ahab when the first six months were accomplished without rain. As a result, King Ahab and his company looked high and low to kill Elijah. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Kareth, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Kareth, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. All of creation is subject to God's will. Even the ravens obey God's command to bring Elijah two meals a day at a time when Elijah was destitute. 
The following is another example of God's power. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him, and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Here's further proof that Elijah and Enoch are dead and not in heaven. We know that Elijah is a prophet. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah. We also know that Enoch is a prophet. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. We further know that the prophets are dead. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? The prophets are dead, not just some of them, and this includes the two prophets, Enoch and Elijah. The dead sleep. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And the Lord God 
formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it his breath goeth forth he returneth to his earth in that very day his thoughts perish and no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven no man hath seen God at any time the only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father he hath declared him men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us unto this day for David is not ascended into the heavens but he saith himself the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou on my right hand but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ's at his coming Is it this next verse that can compel someone into believing that when we die we are in heaven the same day when other verses of the Bible clearly state the opposite knowing that there are no contradictions in the Bible and Jesus said unto him verily I say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise firstly where is paradise paradise is in the third heaven secondly what is paradise the tree of life is in the midst of the paradise of God God's habitation it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven and I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god we know that Jesus didn't go to paradise or heaven that same day of the crucifixion 
Jesus was buried on Wednesday evening because after Jesus had been risen since Saturday evening and when Jesus was initially talking to Mary Magdalene very early on Sunday morning Jesus said to Mary Magdalene touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father Jesus saith unto her touch me not for I am not yet ascended to my father but go to my brethren and say unto them I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God but the second time when Jesus caught up with the women he allowed them to touch him and as they went to tell his disciples behold Jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him Jesus Christ ascended into heaven on Sunday morning shortly after appearing and talking to Mary Magdalene who was not allowed to touch him because he was not yet ascended to his father but the second time when Jesus met the women he allowed them to touch him because he was already ascended to his father but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ's at his coming beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily many times when we read the Bible we read it from man's point of view but is it possible that Jesus answered the second thief's question from God's point of view Christ is God God's name is I am God is eternal God exists outside of time to God every day is today the second thief on the cross being an elect child of God would die that day and the next time he opens his eyes he will be with the Lord today from God's perspective as for me I will behold thy face in righteousness I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen the last day all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me i will in no wise cast out and this is the father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day 
No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. The last day Just prior to Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, Jesus and Martha discuss the last day. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith, Unto him I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. The Last Day, The Second Coming But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Parable of the Wheat and the Tares Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, 
wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus explains the parable of the wheat and the tares. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do inequity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Question. Can the natural man discern the things of God? Answer. No, the natural man cannot discern the things of God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. How then can we discern the things of the Spirit of God? Only by being born again can we discern the things of the Spirit of God. Can we be born again on our own? No, there's nothing we can do to be born again. Just like we had no say in our physical birth, we likewise have no say in our spiritual birth. Here's Christ's explanation of born again. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, 
so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. We have not our own faith, only the faith of Jesus Christ is acceptable to God. We have the faith of Jesus Christ. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Jesus is the Christ. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will be hid to unbelievers. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. God has shined in the hearts of believers. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. It's important to verify the scriptures for yourself. Be like the Bereans. Let God be your light. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. God promised to preserve his word. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away. What do you mean by heaven and earth shall pass away? 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come.